Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, uh, a joint webinar between uh, CPFD and uh, TechPlot. In today's webinar, we're going to be introducing TechPlot for Barracuda, uh, which is a joint project between TechPlot and CPFD to give uh, CPFD users or uh, Barracuda virtual reactor users access to the power of TechPlot 360. So today we have a couple of presenters, uh, myself, Scott Fowler. Uh, I'm with uh, the TechPlot company. I'm uh, the TechPlot 360 product manager. I've been with TechPlot since 1999, uh, filling roles such as uh, software development, uh, product design, and now product management. Uh, if uh, you have any questions about TechPlot or need a new feature in uh, the product, uh, I'm the guy that you want to uh, come to. Then on the CPFD side, we have Sam Clark. Uh, he's a chemical engineer who's been at CPFD since 2008. He's an expert at modeling multi-phase gas particle systems with Barracuda Virtual Reactor. He's worked on projects for modeling a wide range of industrial processes, including coal gasification, chemical looping combustion, polyethylene production, and FCC regenerator systems. He also provides engineering support to Barracuda users worldwide and is an instructor in Barracuda uh, training classes. So uh, just a few notes about this webinar before we get started uh, in full. Uh, we do ask you to participate in the webinar. Uh, there is a question uh, that you use and you can type in your questions. Uh, we do have online, uh, but are muted. A couple other representatives from CPFD, uh, Dr. Baker, who's uh, the Chief Technical Officer, and Peter Blazer, who's the VP of Engineering Services, uh, available to help answer questions today. So please use that question panel. If we don't get to your question right away, we will try to get to it at the end uh, when we have an open question and answer session. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded, and we will send out an email within a couple of days, and we'll also get it posted on both the TechPlot and CPFD websites. So uh, just quickly, today's agenda, we're going to give brief introductions to both TechPlot Incorporated and CPFD, the companies, just in case uh, you're coming from one side of the user group or the other, and uh, we'll let you know a little bit about our companies. Uh, Sam is then really going to take over from there, and he's going to let us know about CPFD and Barracuda Virtual Reactor. Uh, he's then going to go through a fluidized bed example uh, from uh, Barracuda Virtual Reactor and showing how it uh, will work in TechPlot for Barracuda. And then we'll finalize the webinar with where you can learn more. So we'll give you some links, some emails, and uh, we'll open it up for questions and answers. So a little bit about TechPlot, the company. Uh, we were founded in 1981 by a couple of Boeing engineers uh, who originally started writing CFD codes and they needed a way to visualize their results. So they hired a developer who's still at TechPlot today to write TechPlot, uh, so we still have Mr. TechPlot with us and uh, and going strong with 47,000 customers worldwide. Uh, we're known as the most complete desktop post-processing solution. Uh, TechPlot has the ability to render beautiful 3D plots like you see right on this slide, but we can also get into the more quantitative plots with line plotting and uh, 2D contour plotting. Uh, and we are dedicated to saving engineers time. That comes from not only the way that we process data, but uh, our UX design team works on reducing mouse, mouse clicks. Uh, and we also have some nice ways to automate TechPlot through macros and Python. So we are dedicated to solving the big problems in CFD, uh, post-processing large heterogeneous data sets. Uh, this example here shows a, a representation of our sizzle file format, which loads less data, which is, saves you time and saves you RAM because loading data off disk is one of the most time consuming parts of post-processing. We've also developed a solution called TechPlot Chorus, which comes with the fully paid version of TechPlot 360. This tool allows you to understand ensembles of data. If you're doing design of experiments, this is a great tool that you may want to look into. And then automation. Uh, we have a macro language that comes with TechPlot 360, and we also have, in recent years, the last three years, have had a very full-featured Python API that has really opened up the doors for much more advanced post-processing uh, capabilities and post-processing analysis. 
Okay, and with that, I'm going to now hand it over to Sam uh, to let us know a little bit about uh, CPFD and take over the rest of the, uh, the presentation. So Sam here, I'm going to make you the presenter. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Scott. I am sharing my screen now, so hopefully that's coming through for everyone. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for the introduction, Scott. Uh, my name is Sam Clark, I'm with CPFD. And uh, as a company, uh, CPFT Software is a group of scientists and engineers and mathematicians. And we are experts in um, fluid particle systems and simulation. And our product is Barracuda Virtual Reactor. It is a um, specialized CFD code that uh, simulates chemical reactors. And so as we can see on this example over here on the right, and this is actually the, the example we'll use for the webinar um, demo today, um, Barracuda simulates the hydrodynamics of particles flowing around inside of chemical reactors. That's that left view. Um, the center view is showing uh, gas temperature. Uh, and then the right view is showing mole fraction of CO, which is a product from the reactions in that vessel. Um, so Barracuda handles uh, all, three, all three of those tightly coupled together, hydrodynamics, thermal, and chemical reactions. Um, our users, uh, they use Barracuda Virtual Reactor to assess the performance of their systems through simulation. And so if there's an underperformance problem, they use Barracuda to try to determine the root cause of that underperformance. Um, and then they reduce the risk of changes to a system through virtual testing. So if they are considering new hardware to put into their system or some other configuration change, um, they can explore that on the computer. Um, before implementing it. And then finally, uh, people use Barracuda to identify optimization opportunities within their reactors. Uh, we deploy Barracuda through software licensing, application support, and simulation services. Um, a quick note about TechPlot for Barracuda. Um, here at CPFD, we're very excited about this uh, partnership and, and the, the capabilities of TechPlot for Barracuda. And um, just so everyone knows on the call, uh, TechBlock for Barracuda will be our bundled and default post-processor for our upcoming uh, version 20 release of Virtual Reactor. So we're really excited about that. It's gonna be a great tool for all of our users. Um, we will be providing support for our users as they learn to use TechBlock for Barracuda and analyze their data. Um, so if you have questions, um, contact us first at the typical CPFD support uh, email or phone numbers. And uh, if we run into anything that we need more help on, we'll always pull in the TechPlot team. Um, but in terms of analyzing Barracuda results, um, we are the first line support crew for that. Okay, a quick overview of the example problem we're gonna be using to, to do this demo today. Um, this is a large industrial scale uh, fluidized catalytic cracking regenerator and uh, Barracuda is very strong in this area. It's, it's kind of become an industry standard for people who are doing simulations of FCC regenerators. Um, this particular example is based on a case study that was presented at the 2016 AFPM annual meeting. And so there's a, a paper available if someone wants to dig into more of the details of the case study itself and what the engineering conclusions were. Um, that paper is available from the AFPM website and we'll make sure to send everyone a, a real link to this um, so that you can get it if you want it. And then we also did a webinar that's available on CPFD's website that describes the uh, case study itself. Um, and really what we're going to do for the demo today is we're going to look at two configurations of this system. We'll consider a side inlet for the spent catalyst distributor um, as our base case and then a center inlet um, for the spent cat as uh, a comparative case so that we can show some of the capabilities of, of TechBlot for Barracuda. Okay, I think, oh yes, we have one more. So the, uh, the outline for what we wanna to show today um, includes a, basically a wide range of looking at what um, our, our simulation setup is, what the results are, you know, how to explore these in TechPlot for Barracuda. It's, it's not meant to be so much of a how-to or a tutorial, but more of a tour 
of what it's going to look like for Barracuda users as they begin to use TechPlot for Barracuda to look at their simulation results. And then uh, for anyone who's on the webinar and just not familiar with Barracuda from past experience, I'll try to point out a few things that make Barracuda unique among CFD codes as well. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna drop out of PowerPoint here. And what you'll see, um, I have two Barracuda GUIs open here. Uh, one is for our base case, which is that spent cat inlet on the side. I have another one open for our center inlet case. And then I have just a couple of file browsers open. Um, as we look at the demo, I'll copy a couple of files between the two cases. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so one thing that I do want to highlight as we get going is just how we've integrated um, several things into the Barracuda GUI itself. Um, and so the, the GUI is arranged such that you have a tree on the side, and if you walk through all of the steps in the tree, you will go from the beginning of your setup to the end and running it and post-processing it. And so let's just start at the beginning. Um, if we look at the setup grid window, uh, this is where users bring in their three-dimensional geometry as an STL file. You define a computational grid, you generate your grid, and then you want to examine it to make sure that it looks good, that it captures the geometry well. And so we've got a number of um, integrated buttons here uh, to view the grid, view the CAD, and so forth. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on View Grid just so we can see. Um, you click this, it brings up the tech plot for Barracuda window, and it brings up the view that you have selected. So here, this is just a view of our computational grid itself. Um, and so you can open any of those, it brings up the appropriate view. Um, you can also use uh, some of these uh, shortcuts over here in the quick macro panel that correspond to those views that we just saw. So right now we're on grid. If I double click on transparent model, it'll switch to that view, CAD. We can compare the grid to the CAD, you know, these sorts of things. So there's no need to close the tech block GUI and reopen it. All of these views are available right there from the quick macro panel, which is, which is nice and convenient. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of there. Um, the next point of integration that I wanted to point out is in the run window of Barracuda. So once the simulation has started and you wanna verify the setup of your model, uh, this is where you would do that. And so just as an example, I'm gonna click uh, view boundary conditions. This is a shortcut that lots of Barracuda users out there probably click on every day. And um, so in this view, uh, you can view where are the boundary conditions applied on the model, where can fluid and or particles enter the system or leave the system, um, which walls are adiabatic or not adiabatic, depending on how you set up your model. And so here, uh, we can see a number of things. And, and again, just in case people aren't familiar with Barracuda, I just wanted to point out a few things. Um, these red ones are flow boundary conditions where we can specify mass flow rates into or out of the system. Um, some of these blue um, triangles here are representing injection points where if you have a lot of um, air holes in an air grid or distributor, then it's these are great for uh, representing that. Uh, up here, we have some pressure boundary conditions on these cyclones. So these are places where we know the pressure, we're gonna specify that in the model. And then these lines are representing BC connectors that can bring materials back from the cyclone inlet down to the dip leg. And we can specify efficiency or even uh, grade efficiency by particle size, things like that. Uh, so within the TechLog GUI, uh, there are some really nice things that you can do here. Uh, there's a zone style dialog that provides a lot of flexibility here. So I'm just gonna expand this a little bit so we can see what some of the names are and stuff. Um, so we can see we have all of our um, boundary conditions here. We can enable or disable individual boundary conditions uh, very easily. You can change the colors of the boundary conditions. You can do all sorts of things that um, can help you explain your simulation setup to uh, any colleagues or customers that you're working with. So there's a, a lot of flexibility there. To, uh, to help you highlight how your model is set up. Um, again, we saw some other shortcuts back in the Barracuda GUI, but they are all here as well. So we're, in, we're currently in the boundary conditions view. So within the quick macro panel, we can easily switch. We can view our flux planes. Um, flux planes are really nice too. We can, you can turn on or off groups of flux planes. 
very easily. You can change their colors. Um, in this case, we had four flux planes that cover different quadrants of the system. So if I want to make sure that those flux planes are positioned correctly, I can turn each one on or off individually um, and really check my setup in detail that way. Uh, the other thing here is data points. And so I'll just point these out. These are uh, high frequency output data that's available from the simulation. And people use these to represent things like thermocouples or pressure taps. And so often you'll put these in your model exactly as you would have them in your physical system so that you can uh, monitor exactly the same types of data from the model. And we'll be using a few of these as we show some plotting examples. There's a whole set of data points up here that are collecting high frequency temperature data. And uh, that was one of the key metrics when we were doing this original project. And so I'll just highlight how we can look at the output data from those as we go along. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. I'll go ahead and exit here just so we can go take one more look at the Barracuda GUI. Okay, so here in the post run menu, uh, this is the other location where there's a lot of pre-set up views where um, you can look at your results for the particle side of things, for the cell side of things, or for time average cell data. So um, let's go ahead and open one of these. I'm going to open particle volume fraction here. This is a, a common view that, that our users tend to use a lot. And um, one thing I want to point out here is when we bring this up, TechPlot opens one result file at first but really it scans through all of our results in our current directory and we can go to any point in time by using the solution time slider um, or the controls here right so if i drag this slider i can go to any um, transient point in the simulation if i click the play button then uh, techplot 360 starts reading through the data from that point on and uh, if i click this button it'll just take me to the very end of my simulation which in this case was set to 100 seconds. Um, so just pointing that out, there's no need to, to manually load different time steps or, or open or close TechPlot to move between uh, different time steps. Um, the next thing I wanted to show was the concept of using frames. Um, so currently what we're looking at here, I'm just gonna click on this edge. Um, this is a frame in TechPlot and you can use multiple frames within the TechPlot 360 window. And this is very powerful. You can do a lot of nice things. So I just wanna show that. I'm gonna right click and copy this frame. And here I'm gonna try pasting it twice, just using Control V. Okay, so I should have three copies of my frame there. And I'm gonna to try to tile these. And here we go. All right, so what we can see, um, right now we have three matching copies of this frame. and um, by default, the frames are independent, right? And sometimes you may want this. You may want to control each view independently. Um, for the example I want, I would like to link these frames together so that they all stay together in terms of their solution time and the plot view that's being used. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and apply that to all the frames and then close this. And so now you can see if I zoom in or out or rotate the view, um, now all of these views are tied together. And so this makes a nice way of, of um, comparing multiple pieces of data um, in a nice way. And uh, so here to demonstrate this, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna leave the first view as it is. Let's say that's particle volume fraction. And then the middle view, let's take a look at the gas temperature in the system. So I'm gonna activate that just by clicking in there. And I am gonna choose uh, one of these shortcuts here in the quick macro panel, and there is cells by fluid temperature. And so in this case, the fluid in our system is a gas phase or a mixture of gases, uh, really. And um, what I'd like to do here is show how we could get kind of a half, half view of the system. So this is something that's kind of common that Barracuda users want to do a lot. Um, so here I'm going to go ahead and turn on an orientation axis so we can see where we are. And as you can see here, a lot of TechPlot is, is very uh, GUI, mouse-driven, so it's, it's quite easy to use. You know, click and drag things around the screen, um, double-click on things, right-click on things, things like that. Um, so here, based on this orientation axis, I can see that I want to cut my vessel uh, right about Y equals zero. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide that one more time. 
And let's go ahead and use blanking to cut that vessel in half. So I'm gonna say at Y, I'm gonna hide everything that's less than 0.01 just to give myself a little bit um, more than zero. So I'm gonna activate things and there we go. We can see that our view has been cut in half. Um, by default, we can see inside the vessel and it's kind of a transparent view. So you know there could be cases where this is exactly what you're going for. Um, in my case, I would like to see what's happening on this plane where we cut this. So I'm going to go back to my zone style dialog and let's go to surfaces and I'm going to change it to exposed cell faces. So that puts this face here and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say I don't want any translucency. I'm just going to turn that off. Okay, so now we have a, uh, a solid representation of the central plane of our vessel and we can see uh, the temperature profile on that plane. Okay, uh, so the other thing I'd like to demonstrate is just a lot of controls that we have available for um, the color bar. And so uh, one thing that I like to do is uh, play with the top and bottom limits on the color bars just to bring out stronger color gradients and then also change color maps. And so uh, for fluid temperatures, a lot of times I like to use something that goes from uh, like a dark blue to a dark red to represent uh, cool regions versus hot regions. And then uh, we can also use set levels to um, specify the minimum, maximum, and delta within our scale. Uh, so in this case, something like 900 to 1400 works pretty well. And I can do something like 50 degrees um, in between each level. Okay, so that really brings out some of these colors a little bit more strongly. and. Uh, gives me the kind of view that I'm going for in that case. Okay, um, the other thing I wanted to demonstrate is the use of slices. So uh, TechBlock for Barracuda is a really, has a nice interface for creating multiple slices. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate that view by clicking on it. And then I'm gonna turn off my scatter layer, which is the particles. I'm gonna turn on slices. Um, by default, it gives me a slice in the X direction. And for the view I want, I'd rather have Z planes. So I'm going to switch it to that. And instead of one slice, I'm going to just say I want multiple slices. I want something like 10 slices here. OK, so that creates a whole array of slices quite quickly. And then we can change the variable that we're coloring these by. So I'm going to double click on that color bar again. And instead of the I variable, let's say we want mole fraction of carbon monoxide. OK. And so it switches the field that's being used. And then again, we can change our color map to something that, that we might uh, think shows our, our data a little bit better. So I'll just use this, was, this one as an example that goes from kind of this light orange up to a darker red. And um, I'll set my levels to, to just capture it a little bit better, 0.01 to maybe 0.09 by 0.01. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close these guys. All right, and so, you know, in this case, as we've seen, it's it's possible to make some very informative views all within one window of TechPlot for Barracuda, and we're not using any scripting, we're not using any tricky things. This is all just through the, the default controls that are available to us. Um, so once you get a view you like, it's very easy to export this as a snapshot or an animation. Um, so here for snapshots, if you want a still image that you could um, put into an email or a PowerPoint, you can use file, export, you can choose any of these formats that you like, um, a number of other options as well, but very easy to take a single snapshot. Um, in terms of animations, um, as we saw, I linked all these views together by their solution time. So if you make an animation, you can go into this details box, you can choose where the animation starts and stops in terms of the time steps that you have. Uh, you can skip time steps. Uh, when you export to a file, you can control the speed of the animation in terms of frames per second. Um, there's a lot of options for video formats. And so um, you can have those or you can export a sequence of images. And sometimes that's really useful to do as well, depending on uh, exactly what you're going for. So, so quite easy to, to export animations from this. Um, I made an animation previously, just so we don't have to uh, watch the data files being read from 
the disk. And so here's here's an animation of that view that we just created. So you can see all three views move um, in coordination with each other. Yeah. All right. I can get out of there. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is just the concept of layouts here. So in, in this case, we've got a view that we like. And let's say that we want to apply this same view to another set of results. And so that's where we can look at our second case. Um, so here I'm going to do file, uh, save my layout. Okay, so I'm in my side inlet um, case right now. And I'm just going to say that this is my three view layout. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the tech plot for Barracuda window. And here let's get that layout file up at the top of our list. And I'll go ahead and copy it over to the center inlet case. So now from our center inlet GUI, we can start with any view that we want. We're, we're going to override it with that layout anyways. Okay, so once that data is loaded, uh, we can load that layout. And, and one thing I do want to point out is we do have another customization within TechPlot called Load Barracuda Data. So this allows you to load a 3D data set or a data file or a layout. And in that case, in this case, uh, that's what we're going for. So let's load that layout. We're in the center inlet. Okay. I don't want to save my old one. That's just a temporary one. Okay. And we can see that it loads that view that we just created onto this new data set. So we can clearly see that cinder um, inlet for the, for the spent cat, and that comes in at a lower temperature than the rest of the vessel. Um, so that's a really nice way to, to just copy a view from one folder to another. Um, the other thing you can do with frames is not just compare simulation results from a single simulation, but from multiple simulations side by side. So here, let's go ahead and show that. Um, let's say that we wanted to camp, compare side inlet versus center inlet on fluid temperature. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and activate this view. And let's use our load barracuda data tool again. I'm going to load the 3D data set from that side inlet folder. And so here I can pick any barracuda alpha file, and, and this loader knows that it should load the entire results set. And then I'm going to right click here. I'm going to say I'm going to save my frame style. I'll say my frame.sty. And then we can load that frame style onto this frame. OK, so we have our side inlet geometry versus center inlet geometry. And of course, if we don't want this view anymore, we can just highlight it, hit the delete key. And then we have our two views together. And they're still linked together. If we progress through time or anything, the, the linking is still maintained. So that's a really nice way to get multi-view um, post-processing to compare multiple cases. OK. Um, the next thing I want to demonstrate is some XY plotting capabilities of TechPlot for Barracuda. So I'm going to go back to this site in my case. And let's do this based on cells by fluid temperature. And again, our fluid in this case is a, a mixture of gases. Uh, so I'm going to go to the end of my simulation. And I'll stick with this view for now, because this will show us um, a couple of nice things as we, as we go through this process. Um, so the first thing I want to show is uh, TechPlot 360 has the ability to extract data from the three-dimensional simulation results in a nice way. Um, so here I'm going to do data extract precise line. And in this case, I know my geometry goes from about 0 meters to 15 meters. And so I'm going to define a line right in the middle of my geometry along the z-axis. And I'm going to extract it from the volume. And I want, let's say, 50 points. OK, so I'm going to click Extract. And then we can see here a visualization of the, of the points at which the data has been extracted for this time step. And just say OK and close that. And then let's create a new frame here. And we're going to put that data into this new frame. So in this case, this is an XY line. And we can choose as our zone these extracted points. So I'm going to do that. And let's say on our x-axis, I want fluid temperature. On the y-axis, I want the uh, z position or the elevation. 
Okay, so that gives us a really nice quick way to plot that profile versus height. Um, what you'll see is these extracted points actually contain all of the data from all of the fields in, um, in the data set. So if I right click on this, I could choose other things as well. And, and one thing that I might wanna choose is let's say I wanted the time average fluid temperature instead of the instantaneous fluid temperature. We can do that. I can go over here and do a quick control F to auto scale that. And so now we see the time average fluid temperature rather than the instantaneous value at the current time step. I'm gonna double click on this. So there's a number of things you can do. You can customize your labels. So if I didn't want that axis just to say Z, I can do something like elevation in meters. And that puts that there. And there's lots of other customization you can do as well um, on the X, Y line plots. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show was plotting data from, <clears throat> excuse me, from files that are generated as Barracuda is running. So I'm going to create a new frame here. And let's use our Barracuda loader again. And let's load data from our transient data file that contains those uh, temperature, high frequency temperature data. So here, this file is called trans.data. I'm going to open that. And so what we'll see is that TechPlot360 loads in the data. By default, it plots column one versus column two from that original file. And if we right click on this, we can use our mapping style dialog. And uh, here we have a full list of all of the points that were available in that file. And I happen to know that those three temperature points were up here at about a 50 foot elevation. So they are these ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable them. I'm gonna do a control F here again to uh, auto scale. And so now we have these three curves versus time as they were recorded in that transient data file. Uh, we can add a legend to this. So I'm gonna do plot line legend. We can turn that on. We can see here, this is pulling the text from the map name. And so instead of this kind of complex text that's showing us exactly what the position is of each one, we can give them some more meaningful names, right? We could say something like Cyclone A, Cyclone B, Cyclone C. And so in our case, this is more meaningful to the, to the end customer, end user that we were uh, working with. And then of course we can change Y axis labels and all that sort of thing as well. So a lot of um, nice quick ways to plot data that's coming out of the Barracuda simulation. Um, okay. And I think those are all the things that I have time for, I believe in the demo portion, but there were just a couple of other things I wanted to point out. And uh, those were back in this PowerPoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up. Uh, there are a few other capabilities that are, are definitely worth mentioning here. Um, we looked at extracting data at a single point in time. It's also a, a single instance in time uh, through a spatial distance, but it's also possible to extract data at a single point in time or a single point in space <laughs> over many time points. So excuse me, I'm confusing myself. Um, so as we can see here in this middle view, um, what I've done is I clicked on this point in the vessel and then TechPlot read the fluid temperature uh, as the simulation progressed and created this plot, which has the time marker. And um, you can make a video here where they, where they play together. And so it's a really nice presentation of that data. Um, another thing that it has some really strong capabilities for are stream traces. So the animation that's shown on the right um, we selected a boundary condition, and then TechPlot360 can draw stream traces to follow where the fluid from that boundary would uh, travel. And then um, the other things I wanted to point out was uh, TechPlot360 has its own macro language, and so you can, you can record macros in the GUI, you can play them back uh, conveniently. You can also do scripting with Python, um, all of the things that I showed today are just um, available straight from the, from the GUI interface of TechPlot, <clears throat> but there is a lot more power available if you need to do more advanced post-processing. 
and of course a lot more features than than we've been able to mention today. Um, at, in terms of questions and support, um, as I said before, CPFD will provide support to our Barracuda users as they get started with TechLaw for Barracuda. And so, you know, make sure to check out our webinars and our customer support site where we have a lot of help articles and then email us at support at cpfd-software.com or call us um, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time um, if, if you have any questions for us. And so, uh, yeah, at this point, I will hand it back over to Scott. And Great, thanks, Sam. Uh, yeah, similar sort of uh, thing off the uh, webinar uh, about resources. Uh, TechBot does have quite a few resources on our uh, website. Uh, you can see the links there uh, for both webinars that we've done and tutorials. Uh, we do have technical support available both in uh, the U.S. and Europe. Uh, our U.S. staff is uh, available 6.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and our European staff, they're located in Germany and uh, available regular business hours out there through those two email addresses. Uh, and feel free to uh, email me uh, at any time if you have any questions or suggestions. Uh, our support staff is usually a little quicker to uh, respond than, than I am because uh, there are more of them than there are of me. Uh, it looks like uh, you all have been really busy asking questions, so we'll try to get through as many of these as, uh, as possible today. Uh, so I'll be asking the questions, and uh, and Sam or uh, or Peter, we may have you guys chime in. Uh, I'll certainly answer a few myself. Uh, so uh, first question here for Sam: uh, How does licensing work uh, when using TechPlot? Can I post-process one or more cases while another project is solving? Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, so the way that TechPlot licensing will work with Barracuda is that if you have a, a current license to use Barracuda version 20. Um, uh, you will have unlimited TechPlot GUIs that you can have open. And so, yeah, basically you could be pre-processing, post-processing um, with as many TechPlot for Barracuda windows open as you need. Okay. And then uh, next question also for you, Sam, uh, when is version 20 going to be released? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, we have been providing advanced copies to interested Barracuda users um, now, and so if there are any Barracuda users on the line that are interested in trying it out, uh, feel free to contact us and we'd be happy to, to send you a, a download link so you can try it out. Um, our hope is to officially release version 20 uh, in the month of May. And so, um, yeah, we're just, we're doing that uh, kind of preview release right now, let people give us some feedback and then get that official release out in, in the next month. Okay, uh, I'll tackle the next question. It says, uh, how many cut planes uh, can be added in one view? Uh, so TechPlot 360 has the ability to uh, do what we call eight slice groups. Uh, within each slice group, uh, you can show multiple planes, uh, but each of those planes is going to have the same normal direction. So you could have uh, a set of, uh, an arbitrary set of say Y constant planes uh, or Z constant planes like Sam showed in the webinar. Uh, you can also do arbitrary uh, normal direction. So uh, it's eight slice groups and then within each slice group you can have multiple within there. So uh, it ends up being quite a few. Uh, okay, uh, another question for Sam, or maybe maybe I'll have to take this one. Can I use TechPlot on my local machine and have access to the data on the remote CPFD machine? Uh, I think I should probably take this one. Uh, so TechPlot uh, does, uh, does not work in a client server type mode. So if your data is remote, you're going to have to be running TechPlot on that remote machine to have access to the data, or you're going to have otherwise have uh, some sort of remote access to that file system. Uh, most of the TechPlot users uh, that uh, I interact with either have a, a remote desktop types uh, uh, setup uh, or they have a, uh, a mount to the file system where they, they have their simulation data. Uh, Sam, do you have anything to add there? No, I don't. You're the, you're the expert in that one, Scott. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, 
Okay, another question for Sam on uh, performance here. It says, uh, it seems to work really fast with all the particles displayed. Uh, how long did it take to load the 100 seconds? Uh, seems to work really fast with, uh, oh, same question, it got typed in there twice. So yeah, how long did it take to load with, uh, with all the 100 seconds of uh, your simulation data with all those particles? Oh, okay, yeah. And so this is one of those things that will definitely be um, simulation dependent, right? It kind of depends on how many cells and how many particles you have going and how many results files you output. Um, I was looking at this one yesterday just so I knew the statistics. Um, this particular model has about 250,000 cells and something like 2 million computational particles. And if I open the full 100 seconds, um, the load time, I think, was something like one minute. I, I think it was on the order of, of about one minute for that simulation. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add in here that uh, the way TechPlot360 works when loading data is uh, we'll scan through all the data just to understand what data needs to be loaded, but we don't actually load the data until it's required. So uh, if you're loading a, a large transient data set like this, we'll again, we'll scan through all the data, but then we'll only load the actual data, say, for the first time step. And then as you advance to the next, we'll load the data. And as you advance to the next, you'll, you'll load data. And your performance is highly dependent on the speed of your disk, or if you're going across the network, the speed of your network. Uh, and what you're what you're displaying. So in this case, Sam was showing the uh, the particles as uh, a point type. Uh, if you're going to show you know over two million particles as spheres, things are going to slow down quite a bit because you're just asking that much more of the graphics card. So uh, performance can be dependent on a lot of different factors. Uh, another question for Sam here, uh, GMV, which is what a lot of your users are are used to for post processing, only. A the particle slice view in X, Y, or Z direction, not in between. How about tech plot? Uh, I'm not an expert on GMV, so I'm going to have to have you uh, answer that with uh, your background. Oh, okay. So I, I think what the question is asking is, in GMV, you could only set um, like uh, subset limits normal to the primary axes or along the primary axes. Um, and Scott, you would probably know this better than I do about tech plot. Like, can you just set an arbitrary um, angle at which you want to do blanking, for example? I, I don't have enough experience with blanking yet myself to know if you can um, set any arbitrary direction for either blanking or slices. Uh, so the the slices that you showed, you showed uh, multiple slices in the Z direction. Uh, they were constant Z. Uh, those slices can be uh, drawn in an arbitrary uh, direction. Uh, so we do have that quite easily. Uh, the value blanking that you showed, uh, I believe you showed a constant X or constant Y value for value blanking. Uh, if you did want to do something in an arbitrary uh, direction, you'd have to uh, compute the uh, a new variable, uh, which represents the plane equation. And uh, you could then blank in an arbitrary direction like that. Oh, OK. okay. Okay, uh, I'll take this one. Is it possible to generate an animation while turning, zooming, and moving the geometry? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, so TechPlot 360 has built in a, a keyframe animation tool. So if you go to the animation main menu, uh, you'll find an option to do keyframe animation. That will do uh, panning and zooming. Uh, and uh, you can also do rotation by setting up a, a number of keyframes, and we do a linear interpolation between each uh, keyframe. Um, if you want to do anything more uh, sophisticated, uh, you can then use our macro language to set up uh, views. Uh, so you could, uh, when I say more sophisticated, you could say um, animate slices while uh, doing the turning and zooming as well. So a lot of capability there. Okay, geez, a lot of questions coming in. Uh, let's see, uh, how about another one for, uh, for Sam? Uh, is it possible to extract the raw data uh, in another way? So you showed using the extract precise line. Uh, this user says that they use the GMV to TXT Python script a lot. Is, I guess, is there an equivalent to that? Or do you know how to answer that question? Oh, okay. Um... Again, I might need your help on this one, Scott. So GMB okay. to text is a Python script that I wrote years ago that um, outputs the data in a column text format 
from Barracuda, and then you can like take that data into Python and and do further analysis. Um, I don't know if that's possible from TechPlot 360, but it also may not be as necessary, right? If if I understand it correctly, with the Python scripting capabilities that TechPlot 360 has, it could be that we can do a lot of the numerical analysis that we tended to export into kind of raw Python scripts. Maybe we can do those more directly in TechPlot 360. Uh, can you speak to that, Scott? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, after you do that extraction, you have the data in TechPlot, and there are a couple of ways you can get that out. You could certainly write the data to a file. We have a couple of ways to write data from TechPlot, so you can get it in a text format. Uh, and as uh, Sam alluded to, we do have the uh, our Python API, so you can interact with the data directly in, in uh, TechPlot 360 using Python. Uh, so we have some very nice APIs that will allow you to uh, query the data live while it's in the TechPlot GUI uh, to get that information out and do further analysis. Um, so uh, I think you have a lot of capability there. Uh, okay, uh, can we use TechPlot with old Barracuda? Ver ver uh, sorry, Ugh. can we use TechPlot with older Barracuda versions? Oh, yeah, I'll speak to that. Um, so the the TechPlot launching functionality is only going to be available from version 20 onward. Um, it wasn't built into the previous versions. Um, however, if you have GMB files from older simulations, uh, we are including a utility in the version 20 release that will allow you to convert those GMB files into a TechPlot format. And so you can post-process those older results using TechPlot. Um, and so, yeah, there, there is that ability to, to use TechPlot for older simulation results. Okay. Uh, there's another one. This, this might have to be answered jointly by us, Sam. Uh, can you deselect certain particle species from a PVF view? Uh, for instance, uh, look at only coal particle fraction without any catalyst. Oh, okay. I, I think I know what's being asked. So PVF view, I think, is referring to particle volume fraction view. And so if you wanted to isolate uh, one species, then you can use that blanking feature that I showed for um, creating a subset of the geometry. The same blanking feature can be applied to particle data. So you can blank all of your particles that don't meet your species criteria that you want, right? So you can select a certain species, and um, then view just that one species. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly how I would do it. It, it would be the that value blanking feature that you showed for blanking out the geometry, but you just blank on a different variable, which is associated with the particles. Right. Okay, let's scan down here. Uh, what do you suggest for training or, or learning TechPlot for Barracuda? Have you guys oh. developed any training materials other than this webinar yet, Sam? <laughs> so I, we are in the process here. Um, I am. We are hoping to generate some videos to help Barracuda users make that transition from GMB to TechPlot um, in the smoothest way possible. And so we will be um, uh, getting those ready, and uh, and we might also do um, kind of a, a training class that is basically webinar style, right? That way all of our users can can see a little bit more of a tutorial style because this webinar was more showing just what is possible to do and how it interacts with Barracuda. Um, and so we might try to do something else that's a little bit more hands-on, step-by-step for, for people who are using Barracuda every day to do this post-processing. Okay. Uh, another one about performance. I think we kind of answered this already. Uh, it, it depends, but the question is, how is the performance when creating an animation of transient simulation with material flow? And, and again, Sam, you, I think you already addressed this. That you know, it really depends on you know the the, the size of your uh, the size of your grid, the number of particles, the type of hardware that you have. So it's a really hard one to give a definitive answer to. Right. Exactly. I would. You know, one thing that I can say just for people out there who, who have been using GMB for a long time, what I've seen is that the, the performance for generating an animation 
in TechPlot is is about the same as what I saw with GMB, where you, you know you have to read the files from the disk anyways, and and you just can't really get away from that. Um, I've done a couple of tests between spinning hard disks and uh, solid state drives, and the SSDs are definitely very very fast. So again, just hardware dependent, and and how fast can you read the the data from the drive? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, and uh, this one is about uh, platforms. Are there any special considerations for running VR20, I'm assuming that means Barracuda Virtual Reactor 20, with TechPlot on Linux? Uh, have you done any testing on all or uh, any of these operating systems, Red Hat, CentOS, Suzy Enterprise? Uh, I guess I'll, I'll handle the TechPlot side. Uh, so TechPlot, we, uh, we do testing on uh, Linux platforms. Uh, we do support uh, Red Hat, CentOS, and uh, we publish support for Suzy Linux Enterprise Desktop. We don't uh, mention, uh, we don't specify support for Suzy Linux Enterprise uh, Server, uh, so there's SLED and SLES, uh, but uh, many of our users, uh, TechBot 360 users, do use uh, Suzy Linux Enterprise Server, so it, it is known to work there. Uh, any other considerations with uh, BVR? Um, no, not really. I mean, Barracuda, the the system requirements are not changing at all from past versions. So we support um, Windows, uh, Windows 10 specifically, and also Linux. And so, you know, we tend to test on uh, CentOS and Ubuntu the most. And so um, those are those are definitely well supported. But there's no reason that it wouldn't work on other flavors of Linux either. Yeah, I'll also chime in that uh, TechBot is also tested on Windows 10, uh, and we also do have a Macintosh version uh, supporting Mac uh, 10, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I don't believe uh, TechBot from Barracuda is not going to uh, be supported on, on Mac. Is that correct, Sam? Right, that's correct. Yeah, currently we only build distributions of Barracuda for Windows and Linux. Okay. Uh, Here's one that uh, seems fairly specific to uh, somebody coming from GMV. Uh, will there be an equivalent to the batch movie script that will be able to change between attributes while making a video? Oh, okay. So I, actually, yeah, this is this is related to something else that you said earlier, Scott. So I don't think that we'll have a need for a script that necessarily does this, but I think as Scott described earlier, if you use the keyframe feature, um, that should get you the same sort of result, right? Where you can transition your view as the animation plays through time. So I, I think that keyframe feature is really going to be a nice feature that, that we can get to, to that same result and, and probably in an easier way than our old batch movie um, abilities. Uh, let's see, do the two calculations I want to compare need to have the same end time? Uh, not exactly sure what uh, what's meant by this question. Uh, so Sam, maybe you can help me out here, but uh, I'll just give a give a go at it. If in TechPlot 360, you saw Sam load uh, two different uh, results, uh, one with a center inlet and one with a side inlet, uh, those don't have to be the. I mean, they don't have to have the same solution times at all. Uh, they don't have to have the same start time or end time uh, when. But when when you uh, at least in TechPlot, you know, it might make sense for them to have the same start and end time for for your case. But when you do the solution time linking between the two frames, uh, they can have they can be fairly independent. And uh, TechPlot actually works pretty well uh, with that scenario. We've made some uh, specific decisions in TechPlot about how it deals with transient data or unsteady data uh, to. Uh, work with fluid structure interaction and oftentimes those have different uh, time step intervals as well so I, I think you should be fine there. A anything to add or any insight there Sam? I don't think so Scott I think that's you're you're the expert on that one so. Yeah. Okay yeah. okay uh, is it possible to convert PLT so that's a tech plot format to human readable format uh, so yeah, TechPlot PLT format is a binary format, and within TechPlot 360, you can go to the file menu and you can say write data, uh, and that can export it to TechPlot's ASCII file format. Uh, we also have under the tools menu um, the ability to write it out as uh, comma-separated values. 
uh, the comma separated values only has the capability of writing out uh, values that are at the nodes, though it doesn't write out uh, values that are at the cell centers. So just uh, be aware of that. Well, I think that's most of them. Let me just do another quick little scan here, Sam. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of people still online, and it looks like a little bit of activity here. Um, Is there a way to remove the black line in uh, the time series plot? So Sam, you showed a, uh, a time series plot that had a little black line moving. Uh, yes, you can remove the black line. Unfortunately, there's there's no GUI uh, way to do it in the GUI. So at this point, you have to do it through a, a macro command, but it is possible to remove that. And uh, it's something that we should consider is moving, uh, moving a command into the GUI to uh, be able to turn that on and off. Um, can TechPlot handle time averaging of data? Uh, not directly, uh, not built into the GUI. Uh, that's uh, really the expertise of our uh, Python scripting language at the moment, and we have some example Python scripts. Uh, if you just Google for TechPlot and GitHub, uh, we have a, a time average Python script available, uh, a free open source, uh, and if you have uh, a question, any further questions on how to do the time averaging? I'd recommend contacting uh, TechPlot technical support for that one. Uh, and Sam, I'll certainly work with you guys on making sure that you have access to those scripts. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to mention, Scott, too, just while we have people on the line, um, I forgot to mention it when someone said, you know, how do we learn how to use TechPlot? I do want to point out that these webinars and the and the videos that you guys have on the TechPlot website are really really good. And there's a, a big library there about how to do a lot of things. So you know, as I've been learning myself, they, they've been super helpful. So I, I definitely recommend that videos uh, library that's that's on the TechPlot website. Okay. Well, I I think we may have got to all the questions let's just do one last scan here see if any last minute ones have come in um, let's see with TechPlot, if additional data are needed once the simulation is finished is it possible to extract additional transient data i'm not sure i quite understand the question sam do you have any uh, insight on that one um you know just one comment on it i mean there there would not be any option to extract any data that you did not select in the Barracuda GUI as you were setting up the project, right? So if you just totally forgot to export a certain field of data, then it won't be there. Um, but the transient data extraction is is basically, you know, this what I what I showed here, where you can put your mouse anywhere in the domain, and you can extract data at the frequency of your output files for any field that's in the output. So yeah, maybe I think that might address that question it, it is possible to extract things over the entire range of, of output files okay well there were a lot of questions that came in uh, if any of you asked a question and didn't get an answer or have additional questions please use uh, these uh, our contact info to reach out to us uh, so I do apologize if we missed anybody or, or didn't quite answer your question just right uh, it can be hard in, in these types of scenarios so uh, with that, uh, I'll thank everybody for uh, your time and uh, your attention. Um, Sam, great job on the webinar, and uh, we really hope that uh, you all get uh, some good use out of TechBot for Barracuda. Yeah, thank you, Scott. I think it'll be really nice for all of our customers and users of Barracuda. Great, okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Right, thanks, everyone.